faithful, for it is the altar call of the Christmas season, and it issues that invitation, come, come to Bethlehem, and it also issues the directive that we might worship, that we might adore, that we might not simply be curiosity seekers, that we might not just come for a warm and fuzzy feeling, but that we might come to acknowledge and to see in the newborn babe, the king of all creation, the God who rules over all. I take you to Luke chapter two and the account which has been read so very frequently at this time of the year. And it's outside of Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph, they have made the arduous trip from Nazareth down to Bethlehem because, Dave, because Joseph was of the house and of the lineage of David. And he comes there with Mary, now great with child, and they find that there is no room for them. They find lodging out back. But something there would take place of immense proportions of earth-shaking consequence. And indeed, it would be what heaven looks back to all through eternity as the coming of Jesus Christ to be incarnate, to take upon himself flesh and blood, what God had never done, but because of his love for lost mankind, Jesus Christ takes upon himself flesh and bone, and he would grow, and he would be the Lamb of God who would take upon himself the sins of you and of me. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's go back to Bethlehem there that night. And this angel that appeared outside of Bethlehem appeared first of all to shepherds who were probably settling down for the night, praying that their charge, that the sheep which they were to keep, that they would be safe. And they settle down and suddenly there is this angel before them. Think of the terror that would grip their hearts. Sometimes angels would bring messages of judgment. But here, this one speaks of how that it brings good news. And I read out of Luke chapter 2 and verse 8. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them. No forewarning. Suddenly, it just happens. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. These men, they had the sense to be frightened, but the glory of the Lord was all about them. Suddenly, the darkness was pierced, and I'm sure that they were shielding their eyes from the brilliance that was coming down upon them but it just gets better. It just gets better. The angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, in Bethlehem that is, there has been born for you a savior who is Christ the Lord. He is the anointed one of God. He is unlike any other one who has been ever born into this world. He is unique, completely unique. And so the announcement of his birth is unique also. And so it would be with the angel coming. But the angel says that the news would be of great joy for all the people, for each one who comes to understand exactly who it is who has been born there that night in Bethlehem. A sign would be given. Verse 12, this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. 
in a feeding trough. The bread of life would be there laid out as though we come to feed upon him. This will be the sign. And then, as if that was not glorious enough, suddenly that one was joined by a great host of angels, verse 13, and suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God. We are not told how many, but a great host of the heavenly angels, they make their appearance, they come on the scene, and they also want to add their voices to the voice of that one who announced such glad tidings of great joy to these shepherds slumbering there. A great multitude praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Now, the shepherds, what do they do? Do they say, wow, that was incredible. Now let's get some sleep. They say to one another, there's a conversation that we enter into. And when the angels had gone away from them, the shepherds began saying to one another, let us go to Bethlehem, straight to Bethlehem, and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. Basically, they were saying, come on, let's go. Let's go and see the amazing thing that we have been privileged to know about. And so up they get and away they go. They issue the invitation to each other and away they go. And it says, so they came in haste and found their way to Mary and Joseph. They found who they were looking for and the baby as he lay in the manger. And when they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child, not any child, not the one down the street that happened to be born at the same time, but about this child, that this was Christ the Lord, and that there would be joy in many hearts because of his coming. And all who heard it wondered at the things which they were told by the shepherds. Mary, it says, she treasured these things, pondering them in her heart. But the shepherds, they then went back. They had responsibilities they needed yet to tend to. They headed back to those sheep which they were to care for. But how did they go? They had come at the invitation, and they had seen, and they had borne witness to what they had heard about this child. Wonderful things. But now they go back to their daily tasks, even as we come to service, see, we come to a church service, we come to the Word of God, but there are other things that beckon to us. There are things that responsibilities which lay heavy upon us. We must return there. How do we go? Having been fed from God's Word, having been strengthened by prayer, having been encouraged by the fellowship of God's people, how do we go back? We go back just as the shepherds went back. The shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard just as had been told them. They found that the word of God, the proclamation that they had heard was true. It was real. It was not a story. It was fact. It was something that they could rest upon and be in confident in confidence build their lives upon. So dear friend, I would share with you, Jesus Christ has come, born of a virgin, even as had been prophesied. He has come because of the love of God for you. And the invitation is extended. Oh, come, come to Bethlehem and see the great things that God has done. But I would also want you to come to Nazareth and see where Jesus grew up.
Come to Galilee and see where he worked his miracles. But most especially, would you come to Jerusalem and see there at Calvary that he came to die for you. He loves you. He loves you. And joy can fill your heart at this season like no other. Come to him who has loved you and bow before him and be filled with his joy. Joy that is unspeakable and full. God bless you, dear friends, and may for you, may you and your family enjoy a blessed and Merry Christmas.